All right, let's get started. This is the homework one review. We're going to go over the material that I shared with you from the class. So let's get started. Pull up the questions. All right, so the first question is, what is a variable? Uh, this is covered in chapter three. And what you can think of a variable is, is a piece of data that can store something. So think of it like a sticky note. So you could have this sticky note over here and you can put different things. So you can put maybe a shopping list on it. Um, so maybe you want to get the milk and the eggs. Well, we store these different things in uh, a computer and we have different quantities and different types of information that we need to store. Uh, maybe we need to store an address. And these different types uh, need to be stored in memory a little bit differently. So a variable is basically a sticky note. Um, and it's somewhere where we can store information that has a value, but it also has a type. So it's got a value and it's got a type. So that's uh, what we're storing. Next, uh, let's go on to question two. So we're looking at a few different expressions here. And I'm just going to work these out. So we've got these integers and they're declared. So I'm going to store the representation for each line. So we got t, t equals 16, so that means 16 is getting stored in t. Then we've got an x variable, make a sticky note for that. We're going to store 10 plus 2 times t. So we look up t and then we do a little bit of math. So it's 10 plus 2 times 16. So that would be 32 plus 10 is 42. And then next, we're going to look at our next variable that we created. And we're going to assign its value to x minus t. So we're going to look up what x is, and we're going to look up what t is. And then we're going to do 42 minus 16 for x minus t. And when we do this, we get 4 plus 2 is 6. It should be 26. Uh, next on our list, we have Z, another sticky note. Just separate this. So Z is going to be the value of X plus Y divided by 2. So order of operations means that division happens first. Y is 26, so we're going to do 26 divided by 2 first, which is 13. And we're adding to that the value of X. X at this point is 42. So that means that it's 42 plus 13, which is 53. Next up, we're going to change the value of z, and it's going to be 2.5. Right, it's right down here. 2.5 times the value of y. We look up what y is. It's 26. Uh, so that would be <clears throat> 26 times 2 is uh, 52 plus half of that, which would be uh, 13. So that's going to be 65. So we're going to cross out the value that we had previously stored in this sticky note and we're going to replace it with 52 plus 13 which is 65 like I said. So that's um, pretty easy. Basically we're just working with whole numbers and so this is one of the data types that you work with when you're doing uh, any type of programming. Uh, and it's whole numbers, so if there's decimal places, you, know, you have the truncation issue, and we're going to get into that with the next example. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Question three is dealing with floating point values. So we have float A, B, and C declared at the top, and now we're going to just create our sticky notes for the different variables. Um, so this time I'm just going to create all of them. So we got A, then we got B, we got C, 
have C. I'm looking at this and D isn't declared. So right here, this is going to need a declaration. So that would be an error. Um, we're going to assume that uh, we're going to have to write float D to declare it. Otherwise, we don't have a, a variable to work with. So that's going to give us a new sticky note. I'll just put D over here. And let's go through the first one. So the first step is we store 25 in A. So we're just putting that in our sticky note. Now we're dealing with floats, but floats can still store integers, so that's fine. B equals 25 minus 10. So 25 minus 10 is 15. Next we have C is equal to 19.2. And so this is where we have one of the gotchas. I don't have any decimal places, so what it's actually going to do is integer division. And that's going to be 9.5, but since it's integer division, that ending gets truncated. I'll switch colors. So we remove that, and we just store that 9. Okay, <clears throat> next we have D, D equals 19.0, and so that 0 .0 is significant. So when we say 19.0, that is a significant thing. That means, okay, I'm going to do floating point division, um, because when you look at the operation, it's between the two things that you're acting on, and in this case, it's the 19.0 and the 2. One of them needs to have a decimal place, otherwise it reverts to the integer division where you'll have a bug because it won't be doing exactly what you expect if you're creating floating point values for them. So when we divide by this, we do get that 9.5. The next line, I'm just doing the same thing, uh, except I am saying, okay, treat this first number as a floating point value, which actually gives it the decimal place. So when we do float 19, like this, that turns into 19.0, and then we can do the divide by 2, which gives us the 9.5. So we were to cross this out, and we put the same value back in it. So that's what we did in this example. All right, let's move on to question 4. What is an if statement? So an if statement is a conditional. Uh, so this is, if it's sunny out, I'll go swimming. If sunny, go swimming. Um, otherwise, we're going to say else, do something else. So what are we going to do if it's not sunny? Maybe I'll read a book inside. All right, so let's look at these expressions. A is 10 is less than 15. So here we're going to say yes or no if this is true. So is 10 less than 15? The answer is yes. All right, B. Now here order of operations is important. So it's 1 plus 2 times 3. You don't do addition first. You do multiplication. So that would be 1 plus 6. So 1 plus 6, is that equal to, and so we have the double equal sign here. This double equals means a comparison. So 7, is 7 equal to 9? And the answer is no. All right, C, is 14 less than or equal to 14? Yes. D. Is 0 greater than negative 1.5? Yes. And E is a little expression that we create with multiple variables. Um, so I'm going to write them down here. So x is 15 in this example. So 15 plus 2 is greater than y times 4. y is 5. So is 17 greater than or equal to 20? And the answer is no. So that's how we do uh, if statements. These expressions that we have here are what go in an, 
uh, an if statement. So if you look at this uh, sunny, sunny is a conditional that we are determining what our action is going to be. And that's what these are. This is a conditional statement and it results in some value. It's either yes or no. Right? Move on to question six. So now we want a simple if statement that's going to check uh, an account balance. And we've got this variable named balance at the top, and we're just going to write a little expression. So if balance. Now I said more than, that's right here. I didn't say more than and equal to or greater than or equal to. I just said more than. So I'm going to do a greater than sign, which is the angle bracket and 200. And here I'm going to use an objective C print. So NS log. And we need to say go shopping. Otherwise, we want to do something else. So we're using the squirrely brackets, squiggly brackets. Good job. And then we end our brackets. So we do the balance is greater than 200, we do something. Um, so in this case, balance is 200. So when we look at the evaluation, I switch colors. Look at the evaluation of this, we get 200 is greater than 200. That's not true, so I'm going to say no, because it's not greater than or equal to. If it were, we would say something like this. Um, in math, uh, in code, you write greater than or equal. So if that was greater than or equal, then that would be a yes. But in this case, it's not. Um, so when we run this, it's actually going to print out get a job. All right, so the next one's a little bit trickier. I'm going to move this up. So we basically want to print out on separate lines. I'll just delete that. You can rewind if you need to like that. All right, so we got rid of question six. We want to print out stuff on separate lines. And we've got two things to look at. So we're looking at the NS string class. And there's two methods. We've got the character at index, and then we've got the length. And these are uh, both methods that are instance methods. So we act on the specific string that we're working with. So we're just going to write a for loop. Um, so we start with the syntax for our for loop, which is just four, and then open parentheses. And then next we have our first statement, which is usually to initialize the variables. So in this case, we want to have uh, a counter, and we're going to be moving through a string. So let's look at an example. So if I have... Uh, the dog. If we break this up, and this isn't basically an array, you have 0, 1, 2. So these are the index positions. Uh, we use zero based ordering or numbering. And so the first uh, thing here is a D, then an O, and then a G. And we want to print this out like this. So it's just going to print on different lines. This is going to be line one, two, three. 
uh, if you're looking at the console. Okay, so the syntax for this um, means that we need something to keep track of, okay, am I here? And then when I'm not there, am I here? Am I here? So we need something to keep track of that and it's gonna have to store this value and this value and this value. And we're gonna use uh, integer. So int i is gonna be our index. And we're gonna start at zero, because that's the first thing. We put a semicolon. Um, it's not another i, that's a semicolon. And then we have our expression. So this is when are we gonna stop? So we wanna keep repeating while we are less than the length of the string. So in this case, the string length is equal to three. Um, so my expression here is going to be while i is less than, and then we've got some kind of string. So let's assume that the string that we have to work with is going to be called str. Okay. And we're just working in the for loop that's going to print this out. It was a little sloppy. Let me fix that. Okay. So while i is less than, and we use the message passing uh, to call this method. So we say str length. So this is the instance that we said that we were starting with, and then we're passing it length, which is the name of the function that tells us how many characters, which will give us three in the case of dog. Okay, um, next up we have the last thing, and this is what we're gonna do at the end of the expression. So we wanna go from zero to one, which means we have to add one, and we just do i plus plus. And we end our parentheses. So we have these on either side. And then we open our bracket. And now what we have to do is a print statement. So it's just ns log. And in the example, I say that we're using this character at index, which returns a unit care. And the unit care is a character. Um, but it's a special character, so we need to use a special token, and that is a capital C, not a lowercase c. This is for Unicode, and this will print out our value, and next we follow it up with whatever uh, we're looking for. So in this case, we now have to write that str and then it's going to be character at index. That fit a lot on this line. And we have our colon, and then the index is just going to be i. And that's it. And this log is going to print one of these on every single line, so when you output it, we'll get different lines. Okay. Next question. So now we want to print out a message a certain number of times that it was requested. So we're going to actually write a function here. Um, I'll rewrite it. So it's going to be void print message. I'm just going to do count instead of number of times because we're running low on space. All right, so we open up with the squiggly brace 
And now we just need to create a for loop. So it's going to be inside here. I'll switch colors. For int i equals zero. And then while i is less than count, now we're going to do i plus plus. Switch colors just to make this a little more readable. Put our semicolons in. And here we have our print statement, ms log. I'm going to use the token here. This is going to print out an object. So we need to put a comma and then the object, which is my message. Okay, that ends our function, and it's multicolored. So we're just going to loop through. Um, so if I were to invoke this, we're going to have a little section over here. If I invoke this, I'm going to call it uh, like so. It's going to be print message. This is elsewhere in the code. This is not on this next line. And I'm going to say hello. And I'll say three times. And so what this is going to do on the console, it's going to print hello, hello, hello. Because it's going to come into our loop. It's going to start with i equals zero. It's going to say i is less than count. Count is currently three. So let's walk through this. So initially i is 0. And then we go through, we print it once. So that's one time. This was with i equals 0. Then we come to this one, i plus plus. So i goes to 1. 1 is less than 3. We come into our body. We print out hello. Then we come to here. We increment, so now it becomes two. So it's two down here. And then we print. Then we come back in. We're saying, do this last part again. And now i is not two, it is three. Is three less than three? The answer is no. So we stop and we return from this function and it stops printing. So that's that. Next question. Oh. Create an object called person. Uh, it's going to have three instance variables of the appropriate types, age, first name, and last name. Then we're going to create a function to print the information, add properties for the variables. I'm going to open up Xcode for these next two. So we're going to create a new project for this. Just going to do a single view. And we're going to do this on the iPhone. Hit next. Just going to put it on my desktop. Okay, so we need to create a new class, and 
and I'm just going to add it. So click on the left, new file, Objective-C class, double click it, we're going to call it person, hit enter, create. So here's our person class. Uh, Apple already filled out some of the code for us, so it already adds this line. Uh, the next line is our, our line that sets up the actual object. And what we need to do is give it some instance variables. So I'm just going to add what we need. So we're going to need an age, which I'm assuming is going to be an integer, because we will normally talk about age in terms of 26, 24, 13, 12. So it's a whole number generally. Uh, the next thing we need is the first name and then the last name. So those are going to be strings. And now we're going to add the properties. Uh, this is a thing that can help. So we just sort of rewrite what we've written at top. And this is going to expose it outside the class so that other things in our program are going to be able to use this. Okay, so this is our .h file. Everything in here is it's sort of like our outline. We're going to switch to the .m file. This is our implementation file. This is where we put all the details. In here, we have to add our synthesize statement. So we've got the age, first name, last name. Now, there's a cool app called Accessorizer, which will do all of this for us. Uh, we can just basically take it and go. We don't want that. go and run. All right, so we created the variables, added the properties, and next we need to add a function to print the information. So I generally do my functions at the bottom. So we give a, a prototype declaration of the function. And then we're going to switch back to our .m. So down here, we're going to add the details. So I get rid of the semicolon, and now we just do ns log. So we're just going to do first name, last name. So I use the string tokens, and then we're going to print out the age. And we use D for that. So I'm just going to put them in the order that I want them. So we have three tokens here. The first two are going to match objects, which is this one, and then this one. Then our last one's going to match an integer, which is this. And that's all we need to be able to go. Um, so then the next part of this. We just complete that. Uh, is to declare and initialize an object of type person, sets the IVARs uh, for Bob Smith, 25 years old. So if we come back into the code, we're going to create one of these just in the app delegate um, when the application is launched. So I start typing person, but I don't get any suggestions, I get something like PR. So to fix this, I'm going to import person.h. So this is what you have to do when you want to use your new class. So we have that new file, but we have to let this file know about it. 
So now if I start typing, it's going to recommend person and we're going to create a person called Bob. And we do two braces and then person. The first thing you need to do is alloc, which gives you that space. And then we're going to call init, which just sets things up. Now we have to set up the attributes of Bob. So we set his last name. So it's Bob Smith. So that would be Smith. And then we set his first name. And then we set his age. So that is how we can create Bob. We can call the print function on Bob and we'll get his information. So if I just say Bob print information, you see the function uh, came up when I was looking at the different options. So print information is the function we wrote. And I just hit tab to autocomplete that line. If we run this, we should see something Bob Smith 825 is printed out in the console. This is our console down here. You can switch between the views uh, with these buttons. Uh, we want the console right now. So that worked. Um, next, we just wanted to do a, a simple example. So this is uh, question 11. We're creating a iPhone app that will collect this information and basically output it. So we're going to quickly go through and storyboard what this is going to look like. So based on the picture, uh, I don't know if you saw it. This is what we're working with. We need to have first name, last name, age, and then some fields to edit, and then a collect button, and then an output. So we're going to use the UI text fields. And we're going to use the labels. So we got first name. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm holding the option or the alt key and I'm dragging last name. I'm going to do the same with this. We can adjust how big these are. And Xcode will give us little guides to match them up. And we want the age. Copy that again. You're just holding the option key and dragging. Align that so they're centered and the same left alignment. And then we're going to add a button. So the button's right here and just drag it on. We'll call it collect. And then we'll add one more thing and this is going to be our output. And I'm going to do another option drag. And so now we have all these things. We want to connect this to our code. So I'm going to actually open up the assistant editor. And that is by pressing this button. And we can see our view controller, which is the code that goes with this interface on the left. And all we do is we right click and drag. So you keep the mouse down, you drag and we're adding outlets. So this is first name text field. We do it again. Last name text field. Now I like to be verbose with these so I know exactly what type it is. Uh, and that's why I write text field. Usually for uh, most of my user interface stuff I do this. Putting the type at the end allows me to distinguish what's user interface from what's not user interface. Uh, it's just can, it just helps me uh, read the code right away. And I'm using camel case where the first letter is lowercase and then all the subsequent letters are uppercase. And then we need the collect button. Here we have to switch it to action and I'll just say collect pressed. Usually with buttons, I like to have a verb in them, so I generally do pressed. Um, so whatever the name of the button plus pressed would be the name of the action. I'm going to connect that. That's connected to touch up and sides. So when you press this button, it's going to work. So I'm going to stop and restart this. 
build succeeded. We didn't have any issues. Now we can see our interface. Nothing happened yet. Okay, so now we have to plug in the code that we wrote. So view control doesn't know anything about person. Uh, we added that to the app delegate class. So in order to work with person, we need to import it into this file so that this file knows about it. So we just do pound import person.h in quotation marks. And at the bottom, we'll see this new method we added, collect press. I can add a print statement here. And then we run it. And now we see the message appears in the bottom. So we know that's working. We can stop that now. So now what we need to do is we need to create a person object. And we're going to need to set its values. And now we're going to have to print it out to the UI. OK? So to set its values, that means we have to collect this information from our interface. To do that, we're going to have to uh, parse the string uh, to get the age. And then we're just going to grab the others as strings. So and a string, we're going to call it first name. And then we're going to just set it to the first name text field. Dot text gives us the text. Um, or I can write it as text. And I can do the same thing with the last name. And then the age is a little bit different. So NS integer age is equal to the age text field. We're going to call the text property. And now we're going to call another property on that. So we put it in the brackets. And here we can just say integer value. This is a property that string uh, allows us to call. And this will turn a string into a number. So now we have all the values, and now we can set that on new person. So new person dot first name equals first name. New person dot last name equals last name. And then new person dot age equals age. And now we want to print that information out. Um, so I'm actually going to write a new method in our person, and this is the description method. It's going to be very similar to our print information, except this is one that we're overriding from the superclass NS object. And in, uh, I'll show you what it looks like uh, as it is right now. So, one second. So we are going to comment this out for a minute. And we are going to print this out. So if I were to do that now, I can do it to the console. And I can do it to the interface. We're going to create a new string. Let me get rid of the sidebar. String with format, which is essentially the same as that NS log statement. We use the same type of tokens. Now when we run this, and Bob Smith is 24, I hit collect, and whoa, that's not what I wanted. So what we have here is a memory address. So this is what that description method does, is we want to override the behavior because the default behavior is to print out the memory address. We want to actually print out all this information. So we're going to use that string with format again. 
So I'm going to string, string with format. And then we're going to pass it the same type of information up top. So you want to say the name. That's first and last. And then we say the age. So first name, last name, age. And that's it. So now we return this. And if we run this again, I hit collect, boom. Now this special description method gets invoked. Instead of printing out the address of the object, it prints out our special format. And that is the end of the homework. If you have any other questions, just shoot me an email. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks.